Hello guys, it's Claymore here, and welcome back to the channel. So, a bit of a different video for you today. Um, not a gameplay video, not a guide video, not even a patch notes video. I'm actually uh, very honored to be interviewing right now the lead anti-cheat developer for Jaeger and for Cycle Frontier. Uh, his name is Toast. Uh, I've known him, I got very familiar with him back in uh, CB2 in Season 1. Uh, became best buds with all the, uh, the cheaters going on then and stuff. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Toast, happy Friday, mate. Hopefully you're doing well, mate. How are you? Good, how are you doing? Uh, good, good, yeah. Got a lot of prep done, <laughs> got the important stuff, walk the dog for the afternoon, and, you know, made sure all the uh, laundry was done. I hate laundry, but here we are. We got, we got it all done now. Right then, so, uh, let's get started. So, um, if you guys don't know what this is going to be, this is going to be me interviewing and asking Toast a bunch of questions. Uh, we're going to be referring back to uh, times during the game's development cycle, like back in the uh, second close beta, uh, back in season one after it came out before release and now up to this point So we're going to be traveling back in time a little bit referring to back there and uh, catching up to uh, catch up to the present day So uh, first off, let's uh, let's let's get you guys introduced to toast a bit more So obviously you are the uh, the edge sheet uh, lead community manager um, What made you choose that over certain other roles? Like let's say um, feedback manager or etc. Like what what, did, what is your background with this uh, specific role? And uh, yeah, why, why did you choose it? So specifically with Jaeger, um, I hadn't worked for Jaeger until after the launch of uh, the Cycle Frontier. Um, and obviously early on in CB2 and Season 1, this game had a pretty bad cheater issue. Um, so it was less that I specifically chose the role and more that um, Jaeger really needed a community manager, and I was uh, also looking for a community management position. Um, I think they chose me uh, for this position over someone like Kev, who was hired at the same time, um, because I kind of have a background in this. Essentially, I do a lot of uh, my position does a lot of in investigating and looking at cheaters and trying to look into reports and things like that. And I, I have a background of doing that with other smaller teams. I've uh, worked for other smaller indie games and um, just managed my own like server projects and stuff for fun, uh, where you know you get reports and you have to figure out who's being naughty and who isn't. Um, so I, I think I just had a background and I, I find cheating and anti cheat very fascinating and I know quite a bit about it. So. I guess I was just a good fit for the spot and they needed someone to fill it. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I think, I, I mean, I'm mirroring with you. I find that cheat and cheating fascinating as well. Obviously, we can all sit here and agree that we don't like people who do cheat, but admittedly, the processes that go into it and preventing it, you know, it's, it makes for a fun bit of research. And uh, but the way I see it is, more knowledge about a topic gives you way more insight. And so there's not as much, I guess you could say, uh, misconceptions and frustrations about it. The more you know, you know, mm -hmm. the less the less you feel, I suppose you could say. Yeah, yeah well, brilliant. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when it comes to cheating, um, I honestly don't have that much against cheaters because uh, a lot of them are just kind of doing their thing. Uh, for a lot of them, it's uh, like their income. There's a lot of people who cheat in games like this for RMT purposes because uh, they can make a bit of side money by doing it. Or if they're in a low-income country, they can make quite a bit of money by doing it. Um, so, to some extent, I'm not even mad at the cheaters themselves. It's just part of the industry. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of part of the problem. And you know, like I've been, like I said, we can all not like cheating, but you know, mm -hmm. sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And in places that uh, people aren't, aren't, as, aren't as fortunate, sorry, you know, sometimes you know, I think uh, cheating in a video game in the grand scheme of things is better than robbing a bank. So. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. To, to me, it, it feels like we have to problem, solve the problem of cheating rather than try to solve the cheaters because you know you're not going to change people. <laughs> no, of course not. It's um, and you know this is a this is a this is what I keep telling people. This is not like a, a few battles won overnight. This is a long war of attrition. You're going to get more push on one side and more push on the other side. That's just how it is, and that's uh, more or less the state of gaming uh, today as we know it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, so um, you you talked about it a little bit before, and you referenced it too. Um, and you know, obviously, like like we said, we got very familiar during CB two in season uh, one. Um, obviously, the teacher situation in in close beta two and season one uh, it was uh, horrible. Not just for 
players, but for you guys as well over at Jaeger, you know, like, I mean, all that hard work soured because of it. Um, yep. And what was, during this time, during the, the thicker things, what was the thought processes, uh, sorry, what was the thought processes for you and the other, um, on the rest of the anti-cheat development uh, team um, during this time and leading up to season two? <laughs> so essentially the, what happened with those early seasons was um, coming from our previous game, which was the cycle 2019, um, that had generally a smaller player base and also didn't have as much of an incentive for RMT. Um, so even though back then our ANI cheat was much worse and we had much less people working on it, we didn't have much of an issue with cheaters. Um, you know, there'd be the occasional cheater that would crop up, but it, it was certainly not even one of the biggest issues of the game at all. Um, so when we came into this game, I guess Jaeger was a bit unprepared uh, for just how many, how much of an incentive there would be for cheaters to want to cheat in this kind of game. Um, obviously, you can see it in uh, other games in the genre, like Tarkov as well. It's always had a back and forth battle with cheaters, um, but to some extent, we hadn't properly prepared for getting that kind of wave. Um, so as soon as CP2 happened and Season 1 happened, from that point on, it was trying to expand the team as fast as possible um, and put as much work in as we could. Uh, you know, hiring me and hiring a few other people and moving engineers from other teams to the NIG team. Uh, it's just doing everything we could to get the problem and solved as quickly as possible. Um, but unfortunately, with any development, uh, it doesn't happen overnight, which is why it took us pretty much the entirety of season one to get a hold of it yeah i mean uh like i said um it's night and day now and i would rather you know something be taken more time on and then at the end result it's either a massively improved or completely eliminated problem um and yeah i mean uh referencing tarkov um it, i don't even think i don't say realize the the rmt potential uh, behind the game, you know, when the flea market came out, that was the main turning point. Um, I remember it very vividly back then where I used to no life the game. Uh, it literally went from there was no need for an anti cheat to suddenly running into seven to ten cheaters, not just every day, but every couple of hours. It was it was horrendous. And, you know, so I, I, I totally understand that. I totally understand the fact that you might have gone in thinking, well, you know, it was it was fine beforehand. You know, we don't have like anything like a, like a flea market in this game or like a, an online market. Maybe we'll be okay. <laughs> but unfortunately, well, yeah. Yeah, and to some extent, you know, the anti-cheat we had in Season 1 was pretty similar to the anti-cheat you'd find in other shooters on the market. I think a lot of people think we didn't have an anti-cheat or like it was much worse, but it was about on par with the kind of thing you'd find in many other games, especially indie games. Um, but a lot of normal FPS games like the, you know, Twitch shooters like Call of Duty, it's just not as much incentive to want to cheat. I mean, you win matches, but that's about it. You don't, there's no RMT incentive or anything like that. Um, so for our game, I think we didn't, we just weren't thinking about it. We didn't anticipate how much people would want to cheat in a game like that. And we really needed to make it another number one priority. Um, because, yeah, it's sort of blindsided us. Yeah, um, and, and I, I think it's fair to maybe, you know, I think it's fair to, assume, like, a, you know, trying to, like, do, a, a, like, a risk risk accounting and stuff like that, but mm. some, some things you just, you just can't predict. So you might have even thought there might have been a bit of a cheater issue and, you know, did some extra steps, and I still think it probably wouldn't have been enough with the scale of it. Um, but, um, yeah, you know... Yeah, we worked yeah. with battle line and stuff, which we weren't before, um... Because we, you know, we we're trying to some extent to get ahead of it, but mm. clearly, what clearly was not enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I mean that that was seen, yeah. Uh, but either way, I mean, uh, so we, so obviously, like you said, there was a lot of work between season one and season two. There was a lot of uh, prioritizing and stuff like that. Um, what was the uh, the the workflow like regarding on uh, anti cheat systems, new ones, or like uh, or work on what you were working on? And what did you prioritize mostly? Mm -hmm. um, so I think you could see this the most. So season two, but one of our biggest priorities with um, season one was 
trying to find ways to slow down cheaters after they'd already been banned. Um, the issue we were having the most in season one wasn't that we weren't banning cheaters. Obviously, some would slip by for longer than we'd like, but it was that you'd ban a cheater, they'd make a new Steam account or whatever, and they'd be back in the game in like 30 minutes. And other than the items they lost on that account, they didn't really lose much. Um, so our biggest incentive was trying to find a way to make that process more tedious um, and make it more frustrating for the cheater or make it more difficult for the cheater to uh, keep getting back into the game over and over again. Um, unfortunately, with current technology, a lot of people say things like just hardware ID ban or just do XYZ type of ban. Um, with the way technology is currently, it's so much easier to circumvent a ban than it is to ban. <laughs> yeah. Every, every ban method is very, very easy to circumvent, unfortunately, um, for people who know what they're doing at least. Uh, so it, it didn't really matter what kind of ban we threw at them. The issue was that they could just spoof it and get right back into a game in like 30 minutes, which obviously is a huge issue. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, um, this is something I learned a while ago as well, because, uh, you know, I, I'll admit, I, w I was one of those people um, many, many years ago. I was one of those people, just just hardware ban them, just IP ban them, like, yada, 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 do all that. Um, and then luckily at the time, I had people who pulled me aside and like, you know, talking to me about, you know, like the actual systems and the processes that go into place, at least on the, on the basic level. And really the issue is, and this extends to RMT as a whole too, the issue is really not the banning, it's just making the, I guess you could say, the, the, the market uh, for RMT for that environment way more awkward to navigate. You know, it, like, it, yeah. it's like, you know, selling calm sea, you're absolutely fine. Throw in some rock, throw in some storms, throw in some hurricanes, just make it generally harder to navigate through, you know, and, um, you know, obviously make the process even more annoying for the RMT supplier to the customer, you know, so that's that's really the only options uh, that you're left with. So, yeah, definitely understand that. Um, so, uh, speaking of uh, systems and stuff that you were prioritizing and stuff like that, I wanted to touch upon uh, cheater compensation, uh, which, uh, admittedly, and I might be wrong about this, you might know more about this than me, I don't think I've seen a system in a game I've ever played online or otherwise that had a system like this. Um, so, what were... Th so, so, first off, um, if there was someone specifically or a group, uh, who proposed the idea of uh, Cheater Conversation and what were the main challenges of it leading up to its uh, its, its release? Yeah, one of our uh, lead designers proposed the idea. I don't know if their name is public, so I'm not going to say it, but... <laughs> Fair enough, yeah, that's um, fine. But uh, yeah, one of our lead designers proposed the idea. To my knowledge, I, don't, I, I think you're right. I don't think other games have done anything like that, at least for cheaters. Um, I think part of the fear is... It does draw more attention to the cheating, but for a game like ours, where um, a the, the cheating incentive is so high that it's almost inevitable that cheaters will show up, but b the the deaths in our game don't they don't feel good, and if you die to a cheater um, and lose you, your good gear, that's really rough. So that was kind of our incentive to make the system was. Um, essentially, in in the current state of gaming, it's not really possible to eliminate cheaters entirely I, I cannot think of a single fps game on the market that doesn't at least occasionally have cheaters mm. um and so our, our incentive i suppose was for the inevitability when that does happen uh give players a bit of a kickback so that it you know it's probably still gonna sting but it's not gonna be like this whole night ruining event you'll be like okay at least i'll get those guns and stuff back when that cheater gets banned mm. um, so that was essentially our idea was to try to find a way to make the pain of dying to a cheater just sting a little bit less because it, it, it can be pretty rough even dying to just a single cheater in our game versus if you die to a cheater in COD you're like ah that's annoying but I'll leave and go next lobby it's like doesn't really matter uh, but in our game not the case it's like okay that sucks that just ruined my whole night <laughs> yeah no definitely i mean um I, I i just comparing the feelings i had to running into a cheater and getting killed by them compared uh pre cheater compensation compared to after you know like it's it's you know that the, the the scale of being annoyed is way lower because i know i'll get that gear back and you know just you know at the end of the day as you can have 
all the gear and all the money in the game, but it always just feels nice getting, you know, seeing those items pop back on screen, you know, your hard end mods, you know, like, you know, Kinetic Arbiter, etc. You know, it's all, it, it's just a nice little serotonin boost, you know, so, and, <laughs> yeah. you know, and like, I don't think that anything, anything beats it. Um, so what were the main challenges with this system? Did you run into any particular roadblocks or was it actually a pretty straightforward process? It was not straightforward. <laughs> okay, there you go. Um, <laughs> so essentially the issue is, especially with our game, we have quite a bit of junk items, you know, crafting materials and stuff. The, the issue was finding a way to track all of this data because we can't only track it for when cheaters show up, we have to track every single player across the entire game. Um, finding a way to track all of this data and save it for an extended period of time long enough to catch when a cheater gets banned. Um, it, that, that was pretty difficult finding, essentially finding a compromise because we can't we can't track everything and we can't save it forever. So finding mm. a middle ground um, that wouldn't overload our system but can still let us track all these items and give them back to players um that was that was the biggest challenge um especially our game wasn't built uh, there's some games I, albion online is a game i respect a lot for this they built their inventory system basically from the ground up when they worked on the game uh they can track things probably better than any game i can think of um but our game wasn't built with that in mind we we never predicted having to do something like this mm. so our inventory system wasn't set up um in, in, a, in the right way for us to track like everything so <laughs> we had to find a way to compromise so that we didn't overload our data limits that we had um which are kind of co it, it's not an issue with like server space but it's an issue with the actual um back-end code and the the hosting service we use um so yeah, that that was the whole. Yeah, finding compromises was the whole issue, um, and then obviously getting the code done. But yeah, cool. Well, I mean, I can say that you no, know, I think there was only really a uh, either two or three weeks from my memory where just compensation had some issues. Um, I think it was down for a little bit during then, but I can't remember. But I mean, regardless of that, the system yeah. has come a long way, and you know the fact that people can just say now, oh well, I ran to a cheater, but I'll get it back. You know the fact that they can they have trust in the system now just shows the uh, the hard work uh, paying off there and uh you know uh, other game developers out there um obviously you know jaeger managed to work with their game and implement the system games like tarkov marauders um and you know dark and darker maybe consider something like this you know you, 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 you've seen it go very well you've seen the player base be thankful for it wouldn't go it won't go amiss right then so uh moving up from that uh, now, so we've talked a bit about CB2 and Season 1. Uh, let's start moving on to Brighter Time. Let's start talking about Season 2. Uh, so, um, I think it's absolutely fair and truthful to say that the situation has been massively improved uh, across the board regarding cheaters. Um, and, you know, talking about my personal uh, averages, um, I would run into maybe, I would say, three to five cheaters every seven or eight hour stream. And that wasn't a good day. Uh, now I run into that same amount over the course of two weeks. Um, I think there might actually be two obvious cheaters, very obvious cheaters I ran into for the entirety of season two so far. That's my current experience. Obviously, it might vary a little bit for other people, but uh, this is my interview. This is my experience. <laughs> so uh, since launch of season two, um, what have you been currently working on in regards to updating uh, the current systems in place? What's been the main focus regarding general maintenance? Yeah, well, I guess I guess first I'll say what got us to um, the quality we saw in season two. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, that was a combo of a few things. It was um, uh, working on the trusted status system, mm. which allows us to. That was our solution, I guess, to the alt account issue I was talking about earlier. Um, essentially, that was our way to keep. Uh, cheaters who keep spamming these alt accounts on Steam or whatever um, and make it much more difficult for them to actually get to the core player base. Um, the people who, you know, only have one account and are dedicated to the game and play other games. And it's not just some random brand new level zero Steam account. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that honestly, that alone was pretty huge. Um, 
that means that even if cheaters get into the game, they um, can't usually reach their core player base and they end up play playing a lot more with other cheaters or th uh, things like that. Um, and then the other thing we worked on was obviously back on anti-cheat improvements to try to ban cheaters faster. Um, and then also uh, working with um, another studio, Bifron, to uh, get a proactive anti-cheat solution called Hyperion for the game. Um, that made a pretty solid impact too. Um, it didn't necessarily stop cheaters, but it made the development of cheats uh, much more annoying. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and I, we actually saw quite a few uh, big cheat developers who've been developing cheats in our game for months uh, just give up and stop doing it and they moved on to other games like Tarkov and stuff because they just didn't it was too annoying every time every time their cheats would break uh, and they just decided to move on to easier projects which is great for us <laughs> um, so both of those things combined were really the biggest impact um, and there's those are still holding up today uh, that that's still really keeping things at bay <laughs> yeah because i mean you mentioned there as well that uh, bifront is a proactive anti-cheat and uh, battle eye uh, to my understanding is a bit more of a reactive one so um i think it's important and i think that other games can definitely take this where a blend of both things even if battle eye isn't reactive and i might be mixing that up um it's an important to have a blend of both kind of uh, natures of systems in place to maximize the efficiency you know like and you know that i mean i didn't know that i actually didn't know that some of the, the biggest anti-cheat developers actually moved on because of these things that's that's probably explaining a lot of things and uh yeah i think that's uh, been a testament to the uh to the dedication to it i mean i know i made a video on uh i think i if you remember it i made a video on about hyperion and bifron and stuff like that and how you know it was it was admittedly surprising to see a little bit of skepticism uh, skepticism in some of the video comments and stuff but i mean the results speak for themselves that, that's that's 100 a given um yeah it's essentially most almost every anti-cheat would be reactive which is essentially trying to find cheaters and ban them hmm. um the idea behind stuff like bifron and there's a few other companies doing similar things is to um uh, essentially uh make the actual creation of the cheats more difficult which is why i call it proactive um before people are even cheating you're making just the process of starting uh quite a bit harder uh you know it causes games to crash and stuff like that when you try to modify them um which is uh obviously really annoying <laughs> when you're trying to make cheats um so yeah that's kind of the idea behind it and obviously if we just had that as soon as people made cheats they'd be able to run rampant so having both is um, pretty crucial mm -hmm. absolutely looking at you by uh, Tarkov. um so um <laughs> Regarding, uh, so I'm gonna get a little bit, uh, a little bit, a little bit cheeky here. I'll, I'll try my best for you guys. But um, obviously, season three is on the horizon. And, you know, we've got a bit of time left in season two uh, to iron out any more issues and stuff like that. Regarding not just anti cheat, if there are any, but other things as well. Um, but um, what are you guys uh, going to be working on in regarding regarding improvements to the system? Uh, maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe you can tease us a little bit of something uh, that you might be coming up with season three. Give us what you can, I suppose. Yeah, it's a little hard to talk about. Um, yep. <laughs> as I've said many times, I I try not to give too many details because I don't like to give things out that might help cheaters know how to prepare or know what to avoid. Um, but we, to give general overview, we're still working on more detections. Um, I, I guess something else to get out of the way is my team, the NIT team, doesn't usually focus on season cadence. Uh, with season two, it happened to line up that the trusted system came out pretty much right when season two came out. Um, but really, as soon as my team has something ready, we just will push it out in the next patch. Um, generally, with every update, we're usually making tweaks and changes to the existing things or adding new detections, um, which is something we're going to keep working on going forward, never going to stop. Um, otherwise, we're looking into um, I, I can't say who it is. We we have been talk in the, we have been in the talks with uh, um, other companies to potentially add supplemental um, anti cheat stuff. <laughs> That's about all I want to say. Honestly. Yeah, no, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, we're we're reaching out to other companies to see what uh, what's 
on the market right now. Um, just to, we're trying to stay ahead of the curve at this point. Um, I think things are pretty under control right now, but we don't want to get lazy. <laughs> um, so we're, we're keeping an eye out for what's on the market and trying to stay ahead of the curve just to keep it, um, keep it so the cheaters don't want to touch our game. Uh, just keeping things as annoying as possible so that they'll move on to the other uh, games on the market because at the end of the day, cheaters are developers too and they have limited resources. And if this game's super obnoxious to cheat in, they might just not bother, <laughs> which is our goal. Yeah, um, no, definitely. I mean, um, I mean, it's obviously, as, as, as an avid player of Cycle, it's, it's still just, just knowing that there's more consideration and that you guys are staying ahead of the curve uh that's enough for me um and you know just the fact as well that you know it's it, we, we've seen we've seen all this work pay off already and you know, now we know that jaeger are capable of continuing to do that which is enough for a guarantee in of itself uh but yeah um good to hear i yeah, couldn't get any names we but haven't, yeah. like, shrunk our, <laughs> we haven't shrunk our anti cheat team or anything like that we're we're basically just staying steady <laughs> just good. Uh, keep working on keep doing what we're doing it, it it's to be honest from an outside perspective nothing uh, sometimes we'll have major features like the uh, like the cheating comp but most things aren't very exciting it's like uh, we learned how to detect this hack a little bit better or you know something like that yeah um, but we're always just adding stuff with every update um, just keep breaking things for the other side and then the other side keeps circumventing the things we break <laughs> it's back and forth yeah like i said long war of attrition long war of attrition uh so yeah brilliant i mean that's good enough for me um so just to kind of like around the questions part up at least um i'll talk about my little bit about my own experience and you can bounce off it and stuff and uh you know coming from games like like tarkov and like other games too where you know you do feel generally i think at some point i did at least feel a sense of almost hopelessness regarding the situation you know let's say 20 years ago you know when we we're all gaming back then it was a different environment you know seeing a cheetah was almost like cool in that respect <laughs> you know like it was like seeing a unicorn you know i remember those those uh, those hacked lobbies in, in modern warfare and stuff like that we all were all very fond of remembering about but yeah. you know you know things have changed and it's become less of a, a hobby and now more of a business and when it comes to business business can be you know pretty uh pretty uh, brutal on uh, on things and you know, seeing a lot of games get spoiled because of it, or that either that I liked back then, or I was trying out. You know, it was always a, um, it was always a bit of a letdown. And uh, you know, uh, I think for me personally as well, Tarkov was one of those games because, it, like you said earlier, dying in a game like that and uh, losing all that stuff, knowing you're not going to get it back on insurance, it's all it's, it's a horrible feeling, and it's happening so frequently. It just it just it just it just breaks you down. Yeah. Um, and you know, coming to Cycle Frontier, um. And I think it was mostly CB2 I really got hooked on. Having seen this this problem, this this huge this huge huge problem that I just didn't see a way out of, mm -hmm. completely turn itself up on its head and completely see a massive improvement in season two to the point now where it's not a problem. You know, where it almost feels like a unicorn kind of like level up again. <laughs> you know, it, it it's it, it's been fantastic. You know, and obviously now it's given. You know, now that that's problems out of the way, now we can get to the nitty gritty. Now we can start looking at the, the the core systems in place of the game and start making some real improvements. You know, and 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 things are happening. And uh, so, you know, personally for me, uh, this has been an absolute pleasure to play with season two. It's been it's been genuinely amazing, and you guys have done uh, an incredible job. And uh, I, I I've never seen a big turnaround like this in any game I've ever played or kept an eye on. So. I and mean, then that goes without saying that it's, we're all very thankful it's for hard. that. Yeah. Oh no, listen. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, whenever, even something as simple as just like, and I'll reference this, this as a bit of a, a side thing, you know, uh, let's say for example, you've got one of these infamous glitch spots on cycle, you jump up on or you boost up on, et cetera. And you know, it's as simple as, at least in some people's eyes, simple as just throw an invisible wall there. That'll be fine. But mm -hmm. the, the, the thing is, is like, you know, we don't know how, it's like a domino effect, you know. You change one thing, and then ten other things happen, and then suddenly you've got a big problem. And and, and it's, the point is, is that it's a, it's there's a lot more work to go into it behind the scenes, and sometimes it's constant. Sometimes there's no there's no breaks, and uh, you know, you guys have uh, you guys have absolutely smashed it with the anti cheat. You really have. Um, 
and it's and it's very heartening to hear as well that you guys are going to be uh, endeavoring to stay ahead of things and uh, you know keep up to date with things and not let just things kind of like just steady out a little bit. Um, so uh, now that we've got the main questions out of the way, uh, I'm going to challenge you a little bit with uh, some Twitter questions. Uh, so give me one second whilst I do this. Um, so let me just hop over back to here and then we'll back to this. There we go. All right. So. First things first, uh, I'll ask you a couple of questions. Uh, maybe one or two. Nothing big deal. Uh, so, um, uh, so uh, I'll ask you two questions and then I'll move on to the other stuff. So, uh, in terms of what currently is out right now, what is your favorite map in the game? Um, honestly, maybe I... I know some people aren't super happy with Theris, but for me, Theris is like, I, I think I care more about aesthetics maybe mm. <laughs> than a, a competitive gameplay. Um, so for me, the experience of playing on a map matters more. And for me, Theris, like running through the caves and stuff, um, is very exciting for me. Uh, but I know competitive players are maybe hoping for changes <laughs> but uh to me running around in the dark and all those ambient noises and stuff is is a experience that i don't really uh, see in too many fps games um usually games like more brighter like, i guess tarkov has a, lot, a few dark maps too but um most games like uh more brighter and easier to navigate maps whereas with theris we just made it very puzzling and complicated and i find that very fun to play <laughs> yeah i mean i've always said one thing no matter no matter what is happening with iris right now and, and how it's received i've always said one thing the map is uh thematically very well done um yeah, it, it's, so it's, cool. it's it's a it's a, <laughs> it's a stunning map and i think discovering the forge for the first time hearing all the noises and the sense of scale and everything like that 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 alone is you know is is really really cool um so totally get that totally get that um, one more thing as well before me before I move on to some community questions. Um, in it, let's it, it, this could be something minor, it could be something major. Completely, you know, it doesn't need to be a grandiose kind of thing. Uh, what's one bit of content you'd like to see added in the game? What would you like to see personally? Uh, that's a tough question. That was mm. a, a lot of the things I want have been um, actually improvements to some existing stuff. Like mm. I think. Um, uh, one thing I'd love to see improve personally is the, um, my mind's blinking, the, the towers, <laughs> the, the uplinks, the uplinks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I love the uplinks in the original cycle. I thought that was really fun gameplay and it was really fun to fight over them. Um, but I feel like in the current game, it's more just like this, this quest thing that you can just kind of sit around and do. And I'd love to see the reward and the intensity kind of scaled up on the uplinks to bring them back to being the thing players want to fight over. Um, Cause I just think that's such a fun gameplay of trying to get your uplink done and defend it from players trying to take it from you. I think that's exciting. And it's a good early game introduction to those kind of systems that you get with like the drill and other late game stuff where you want to fight over something. Yeah. I mean, essentially it is uh, in, in all respects of the phrase King of the Hill. You know, you were holding an area down and you're fending everyone off. And, uh, you know, if you manage to do it, you get away with a nice reward. In this case, uh, yeah, a drive. No, I, I, I agree. Yeah. I'd love to see uh, something more done with that. Um, I know at one point, I think someone mentioned maybe a sort of interactive mini game you could do to speed up the uplink process itself. Maybe even get yourself some extra rewards. Definitely. No, I uh, I think that's a great idea. Um, right then. Cool. Uh, so let's hop over now then to these, uh, these old questions. So, um, we'll start off uh, with a question from JTEF. Uh, I know he, he admittedly, I said a uh, question. He gave me questions, so I'll pick two of them. <laughs> yeah, he did. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, the first one is, what made you pick a certain entity program? This could be, by the way, this could be uh, uh, Hyperion. What made you pick um, that system or the systems you have right now over other systems? Mm -hmm. um, so, when it comes to Battle Eye, there's really not a whole lot of choice right now um, in, in those reactive anti-cheats. Um, I think you've got, I think the three big ones would be Punk Buster, Easy Anti-Cheat, and Battle Eye right now that mm. are publicly, well, maybe not publicly, but uh, dev studios like us can buy them. Um, and for us, um, 
we worked with a lot of them personally, we found that uh, Battle Eye was really nice to work with. They were very cooperative. They would help us out when we had issues. And we also found that they haven't had any issues with things like false positives. And they've been very good at just doing, <laughs> doing what they do. I mean, mm. it's very, um, it's been very easy for us to work with them, honestly. Uh, they just, they update their stuff, they catch new cheats and we do our thing and it just works very smoothly. Um, we found, I mean, the simple answer is we just found they work the best for what we were looking for. Um, but yeah. the other ones are honestly pretty good too. They're, they're all kind of neck and neck right now. There's been, there's been points in the past where one is clearly the best, but I think right now they all have their own pros and cons. Cool. Yeah. I mean, uh, if, 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 I mean, if it works the best for you, there's not really much else to say. Yeah, um, it's, and, uh, it's maybe yeah. not exciting, but that's, that's so, about all there was to it. We, we really like working with them. So yeah, so sometimes that's all that needs to be said, man. Um, and uh, to link on to this one, uh, what, in your experience at least, uh, has been? Now this might be a bit of a, a bit of a hard question to answer because, admittedly, I couldn't really think of this uh, an answer to this. Um, for you personally, what has been the most difficult kind of hack to deal with? Like, what's been the most complex? I guess you could say. Um. This isn't actually something that is just true for our game, but it's true for pretty much every FPS game on the market. Uh, there's essentially different levels to how invasive a cheat is to the game. And you have these very surface level hacks that essentially all they do is they modify inputs. They aren't injecting anything into the game itself. Um, the most common ones you'd see doing that would be ESPs, seeing through walls, and um, aimbots. Essentially, all an aimbot is is you're reading data getting sent to the client from the game, and you're interpreting that, and then you're sending inputs, just normal mouse inputs, back to the game to, you know, modify the aim and do what you want. Um, I think a lot of people think those hacks are blatant and super easy to detect, but because they don't modify the game itself in any way, and they're just doing normal, normal inputs, um, that stuff's can be really hard to detect mm. um and that's that's true for every game that's why almost always the most common hacks you'll see in any fps game will be those two things esp and aimbot um it's just it's a tough the current technology it's tough to um, detect that kind of thing because a lot of anti-cheat detections currently they look for unnatural behaviors like the game doing something it shouldn't or the game being modified in some way or mm the client reading something that it shouldn't have access to, but those two hacks are able to avoid all of that and just use natural in inputs to do what they do. So they can be very hard to detect. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, I actually uh, I actually didn't know that myself. Um, I think there's always like a uh, an opinion that if this guy is always headshotting me, how is the game not picking this up? But I mean, to, to, to be honest with you, there are a lot of people who, in games, uh, who, they're just absolutely insane. You know, you look at some of the best players in any FPS genre and they click heads very, very frequently and commonly. So it's not like you can just set a, a variable of, if this person is headshotting 95% of the time, ban him. You know what I mean? It's 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 a bit trickier to do that. Um, but yeah, I actually yeah. wasn't aware. Yeah. Yeah, but with that, the issue isn't, we could detect if someone is headshotting. Um, the issue isn't that we can't detect it, it's that finding a way to detect it without accidentally exactly fal falsely banning other people. That, 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 that's, that, that's, that's the issue, yeah. I mean, I remember one instance where, um, I can't remember his name and I'm sorry, uh, I'll see if I can find it out post editing, but there was a streamer uh, for uh, Cycle and he was going for a challenge to see how many kills he could get in a single game without dying, like a single server instance. And um, I think he reached something ridiculous like 50 odd or something like that. And then he got banned because of it. Uh, just yeah. because he was just because he was playing well at the game, you know, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was really, really cool to watch, uh, absolutely. But um, you know, I mean, that's just you know, like you said, it's the false positives that play a factor in that. Definitely. Yeah, I, I remember that. That was yeah. um, we essentially we were trying to make things as strict as we felt like we could because the cheating problem was so bad in season one. It was, and yeah. That was obviously a detection that was too strict, um, and it ended up false banning that guy. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We ended up changing it later. I don't think that would happen anymore if someone did that again. But um, yeah, that, that was kind of embarrassing. But, but that's <laughs> exactly, that's kind of the issue with trying to detect just stats. Um, 
you, you there's out, weird outliers like maybe some guy is going for a headshot only challenge with like the bolty <laughs> i don't know yeah uh, and so it, it, things can get really messy when you're trying to do stuff like that yeah well i mean if, if it's not if it's going to be way harder to kind of like exceed that threshold now uh maybe to that streamer try it again so you can get any higher this time <laughs> yeah. all right I don't, and... yeah i think you should have no problem now i don't think <laughs> yeah very good very good right then so this is going to be from a slightly familiar name uh this would be from a uh cycle partner uh vasco uh vasco p7 um are you above six foot i, d I don't Kinda know makes... I... uh I feel... what is that in, in centimeters I oh forget. goodness um... uh <laughs> I think it's like 180 something. Um, something like that, I'm yeah. I'm exactly six foot, actually. <laughs> they, they, they get, well, so he's not above, nor is he below Vasco's. I don't know why yeah. you asked me that, but there, there we are. That's, that's a very <laughs> question. Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, this is actually something I wanted I wanted to pick up on, because I know this has been kind of circling a few more communities regarding, regarding games, regarding additional measures taken against cheaters. And I know some games, I think, in... Uh, uh, somewhere in i think i can't remember where it was somewhere in china i think uh, are doing this but um why aren't jaeger or are they considering uh personal ids attached to accounts to maybe act as a verification step so for example if cheetah was to had to put in his his uh, or her uh, or they credit card information um and then they get banned then they would use that stat to then potentially avoid any more accounts being generated but, uh, uh are jaeger considering something like that or is it not on the cards quite yet um, the simple answer is that it's not industry standard. Uh, gamers aren't used to something like that. And I think if a, a relatively unknown indie team like us tried to pull that sort of card, I, I don't think it would go over very well. Yeah. I think you need, you need people like Riot and Blizzard and those big studios to start pushing that, that kind of thing before people like us can attempt it. Because I think otherwise people are just going to be like, that, that's weird, I don't want to give some studio my info like that which is understandable honestly um yeah it, it, it would reduce cheaters but it would probably also reduce our player count so <laughs> well, well that and you know uh, you know it makes things like uh, data breaches and data leaks uh, way more uh, yeah. way more impactful um so you know it, 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 it's a nice idea you know a completely cheaty free game but i guess you could say at what cost you know what potential yeah. cost is that for and if it's if it means potentially my information becoming public or if it means um the servers are completely barren <laughs> probably we'll leave yeah. it be for now yeah yeah that's uh, a lot more common in um south korea actually they uh south korea has government issued ids and it's actually pretty common in quite a few games to tie the id to the account um so i know i think overwatch was doing that for a while if yes you got banned, if you got banned in south korea it was tied to your id and you pretty much had no way to make an alternate account <laughs> so uh, it's certainly something that can happen, but I think in the West, especially, it's it's a pretty unpopular idea. <laughs> yeah, you know, with uh, yeah, no, I, I totally, I totally understand that. Totally understand that. Um, so, uh, next question, a bit more of a uh, another uh, interesting one. Um, who is the craziest developer in the team? <laughs> and, this, and, this, and this is um, from uh, <laughs> this is from Skanky on Twitter. I want you to know, Skanky, that you're about to burn some bridges right now. <laughs> uh, I don't know about craziest. I, I think uh, I, I'm sure some people know him from the Discord days. Can be quite fun. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, 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 um, definitely. Yeah. I think so uh, sometimes yeah. our our team can also there's there's some. Uh, our team can create some pretty good memes <laughs> with in-game assets and stuff. Uh, those, those can be pretty fun. But yeah, I don't know about craziest. <laughs> That's fair. Most, most of the team seems pretty sane to me. <laughs> maybe that maybe, makes me the crazy one. Uh, maybe. You know, maybe you've shot yourself <laughs> in the foot there, yeah. I know, um, I think one of my favorite things, uh, I, I have to forgive me, I think it's Roderick. I think it's Roderick. Um, mm -hmm. The patch notes squeezing in some... Uh, some funny yeah uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah i i definitely He's responsible for that yeah. I, I i appreciate that immensely and uh it makes them reading the patch notes way easier so uh, thank you for that rhetoric uh right and then uh wrap up this last question now i i don't think you know the answer to this uh although i'll shoot my shot because i actually really like the uh, the first game uh spec ops the line two when from Krilla free on twitter <laughs> <laughs> um unknown <laughs> yeah I, uh, not currently in the works um 
that would be pretty amazing though spec ops the first spec ops was amazing i didn't work on it but um a classic game <laughs> for definitely, sure definitely i mean uh, it's 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 essentially it's a cult classic and a cult favorite um yeah yeah well maybe maybe one day we'll see it uh I, yeah i'd love to see it but we, uh, we have some we're working on the cycle right now and uh, I have some other ideas I think that would probably come before we would work on a sequel to this Spec Ops. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You, 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 you got to make sure there's a, an absolute, absolute solid foundation laid before you, uh, you move on to the, the next project. Definitely get that. Mm. Uh, but yeah, sorry, Skanky. Yeah, I tried. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, I think that's more or less wrapping up the community questions there, uh, which means uh, I think we're more or less done here, Toast. Um, once again, thank you an absolute ton uh, for yeah, hanging out with me today. Yeah, brilliant good to hear this is my first one so <laughs> good to hear right um and uh additionally uh if you guys uh, were interested in the tackle frontier um free to play on steam and epic pick it up the only thing you'd be wasting is your time um and you know this game has gone through a lot of changes and is going through a lot of really good changes um probably now is arguably the best time to play it and if you don't like cheaters in video games even more so uh but that's about okay. it guys um i will see you in the next video take care stay safe love you all and peace.